Hi everyone. In the last video I covered installing our spec and how to structure a test. But after posting that video I realized I missed some things. So this is part two on how to structure our spec tests. The first topic I want to cover is context blocks. In the previous video we covered describe blocks which are the basic building blocks for structuring tests. However, our spec also provides context blocks, which behave in the same way, but should be used differently. The way I like to use them is for testing different scenarios for a particular method. For example, we have this test for checking that a newly created user is not an admin. We could expand it with a context block so that we test both the is an admin and the is not an admin case. Let's update the test now. First, we'll add a describe block for the user method. So describe user, uh, and I'm saying the, I'm using the hash character for user because it's an instance method, and I would use dot if it was a class method. So I can say describe the user, I'll add another end in there and let's indent that. And then we can add two context blocks. One for the case when the user is not an admin. We'll say not an admin. And one for the case when the user is an admin. And then I can move this test, um, which tests the case where the user is not an admin, up into the is not an admin context. And then I'll just update the um, test description string to remove the duplication. I'll just say returns false. Oops, returns false. Lastly, I'll copy and paste this test into the second context and I'll update it for the case when the user is an admin. So it should return true and we expect user.admin to equal true and that is only going to happen when user is initialized with the admin uh, param passed in as true. Now, at this point, I could run the tests, but they would fail. Let's verify that now. And you can see it's failing because um, of an argument error. User is receiving the wrong num number of arguments. To fix that, we need to update the user class and we need to allow admin to be passed in. I'll add a parameter to initialize. And instead of assigning to false by default, I'll actually use the parameter that we're passing in. That should be all I need to do. Let's jump back to the tests and everything's green. So now we have the two scenarios both passing and both testing different cases for the user admin method. Next up, I want to talk about let. This is a very useful RSpec feature, which allows you to define memoized helper methods. For example, we could simplify the test that we've just written uh, and improve readability by moving the user model creation into a let. So what I can do is uh, take this and I'll move it up into the user describe. And I can say let user and inside the block, I'll paste in the code. So what this does is evaluates this code here and assigns it to a variable 
called user, which is accessible within this describe block. Then what I need to do is, because of course, this will work for the second context, but the first one um, should have admin set to false. So to make that conditional logic, I'll change this to also be a variable, oops, which will be another let, say admin. And what I'll do is assign it to false. So this is essentially the, de the default value. And then inside this context, I'll say let admin true. So what I'm doing here is, oh, and then I don't need this. So what I'm doing here is instead of having the user initialization code in each test, I do it up here in a let. I initialize it with a default value of false, but then in any test where I want to override it, I can do so by redefining the let. The next thing I want to talk about is two RSpec methods which go hand in hand, described class and subject. Described class is automatically assigned to the value of the class being tested. So in this example, uh, it will be assigned the value of the user constant. So we could change user to described class. In fact, at this point, let's rerun the tests to prove that the let's refactor and the use of described class actually works. And there we go. In a small test like this, using described class doesn't give us much. The benefits come when this test file grows and we need to make changes like renaming files. Um, using described class means we only have to do it in one place. Now, subject is also automatically assigned by RSpec, but instead of being assigned to a constant, it's assigned to an instance of user. And if you want to, you can override subject manually if the default initialization values are not what you want. In this case, I'll redefine subject as user.new, admin, and I'll pass in the admin parameter, which we're defining here. With subject defined, there's a few things I can do. Um, in this case, I'm going to show you how to simplify these tests even further using both subject and RSpec's one line if statement. So what I can do is remove these three lines um, and instead I can do it is expected. And the reason I can do is expected is because that refers to the subject. So I say is expected to have attributes admin false. And you can see in this case, this test makes a lot of sense because the test description is just saying returns false. So it's really superfluous. It's much nicer just to have this one line. Um, it's easier to read and it reduces the number of lines of code we have. Oops, so let's remove that. And I can go ahead and do the same thing for this test. It is expected, oops, is expected to have attributes admin true. And I'll remove this code. Let me jump over to the terminal and verify that still works. There we go. That's it for this video. As always, you'll find links to the text version and code samples for this course in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.